Let me show you something about the noise immunity of it. I'm going to do it again. This time, I'm not going to be the perfect patient that I was the first time. But this time, I'm not cooperating. Eh, 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 eh. Oh, mommy, she's killing me. Mommy, mommy, do something. I'm Greg Alex Sr. from E3 Metacoustics, and today I would like to talk about the features of the Interacoustics Titan. The Interacoustics Titan is a very, very versatile and efficient piece of equipment. It can be used as a PC-based piece of equipment, or it could be used as a handheld piece of equipment. It can print directly and instantly to a wireless printer, or uh, connected to the PC, uh, and uh, perform any of those tests. Tympanometry, autoacoustic emissions, and or ABR screening. You can have a version that is just tympanometry, just autoacoustic emissions. You can have a version that's both of those. You can have a version that's just ABR screening or a combination of all three. So any combination that you'd want. In tympanometry, you have screening tympanometry, as well as diagnostic tympanometry. You can have high frequency tympanometry if you want. You can also have uh, ipsilateral and contralateral reflex, as well as reflex decay, and even wideband tympanometry, 3D wideband tympanometry. So it is uh, the, a tympanometer that will give you any or all features that you want. And for autoacoustic emissions, you can have DPOAE or TEOAE or both and you could do screening or diagnostic. And for ABR screening, it is an automatic infant ABR screening because a lot of practices do that uh, as a regular part of their practice. They rescreen babies that were screened before. We did a study uh, for uh, interacoustics on this where we compared it to every other uh, infant screening device on the market. And uh, we did this at the Cab Medical Center several years ago, and we were trying to uh, do side-by-side -side comparisons uh, for efficiency. And uh, the algorithm that is in this ABR screening in the Titan is, is beyond measure. Uh, comparing it to everything else on, on the market, it uh, was faster and easier to do. In fact, our ag average baby that was actually sleeping or still uh, took an average of 24 seconds per ear to test completely. And it's completely automatic. You, pl you apply the three electrodes, you can test both ears at once, uh, and again, within as little as uh, 24 seconds. Uh, if you're doing both ears, it might take you a little longer. It might be 48 seconds. You have the results. So let me uh, just go over the features. So you could do, as I said before, uh, uh, tympanometry, and that can be screening diagnostic, 226 hertz, or uh, high frequency, 1000 hertz, and you can have reflex, reflex decay, even wideband tympanometry if you wanted. So it's a full diagnostic uh, tympanometer. And uh, for OAE, you can have DPOAE, or TEOAE, or, uh, or both. And then for the infant screening, this is how it works. You're applying three electrodes. It, when you hit go, it does an electrode test automatically, and provided they pass, and they pass very easily, uh, uh, then it starts, and then these green bars start moving, one for left, one for right, start moving upward as the response average grows, and it fits within the algorithm that determines uh, a 99% probability that a response does occur. Once it gets to 100%, it goes green like this and the patient passes. If it uh, goes all, if, if the patient is going to fail, then the, uh, the bar would, would uh, stay either red or blue for which ear you're doing and uh, would not rise and would never make it to the top uh, where it turns green 
and the patient passes, he would refer instead. So you can use it as a handheld system, go anywhere you want with it when you're done, doing whatever test you wanted to do, one test or multiple tests, uh, both ears of course, you could hit print and have it instantly print to a little wireless printer, or if you used it as a handheld and you want those results to be stored electronically on the computer, then you sit it down in a cradle, and then once it's in the cradle, uh, you can manipulate the software to pull those results in, uh, give that patient a uh, demographic information, and of course save it, pull it up anytime, print it out, and they're custom reports, uh, all of that. Here's what the tympanometry would look like, and we'll, we'll use it in a minute, and you'll see how fast uh, and noise immune that is. And this is how the OAE would look. And again, you could use this as a handheld and download the information into the system, or just print it out. Or you can never take it out of the cradle if you want. A lot of users don't, never leaves the cradle, because they're using it purely in the PC mode. So it is a true hybrid. It could be standalone, handheld, diagnostic, or screening, uh, and it can work 100% on the PC. Or you can do a combination of both. We have some users that do. This is what the, OA, the OAE looks like, and when I show you how fast, efficient, and noise immune the OAE is, you'll probably agree with me that it is the highest performance OAE on the market today. So here is the Titan outside of the cradle. And here is the probe. The probe is very, very lightweight, very easy to use, and very easy to disassemble and clean in case you got it clogged up. And when you're using it as a handheld, it's simply a matter of pressing one button to turn it on, and then you can scroll up and down and select a protocol, and you can put it in the ear and hit go after you select which ear you're doing. When you're done with that, you can select the other ear and hit go, and um, when you're all done, you can um, print instantly from a wireless, a small wireless printer, or you can put it in its cradle, and uh, and then uh, the information would be sent to the computer into the software. Uh, in in between uses, if you're using it as a handheld, of course, it's sitting in the cradle, and the uh, battery is being charged. There's a battery compartment in the back. And if you did a lot of handheld work, there's actually two batteries. One that's in this, another one that's in the cradle, and the one in the cradle is constantly being charged, just in case you um, would like to um, do so much with this, um, it would be almost all day. It would certainly be the later part of the afternoon when you'd have to change a battery because you used it all day. Uh, and you could just grab the other one uh, out, out of the cradle and, um, and pop it into the, the back and you'd be good for another day. So um, it's, it's ideal for any of those situations. When you used the PC uh, function of the Titan, as many users do, you use along with it a database called Auto Access. Auto Access. And this is the new Auto Access database. You simply click on an icon of, uh, for Add Patient, and then you would put in the patient's name, first name, last name, the date of birth, and then some type of ID. These four fields are the only four that have to be filled out for a patient, and that's why they have the red um, arrow on them. The rest of this information you could put in, and you can even write remarks in. The remarks might be the patient's history or um, how they're presenting their, their, their case. Um, once you're done filling out the patient demographics, then you would simply um, push the icon for save. The patient would appear there. Uh, you would click on that patient to know that you've selected them and then double click on the function uh, that you want. If you had several pieces of equipment from Interacoustics, you might have um, your Eclipse um, auditory evoke potential system on there. 
you might have an Equinox audiometer on there, uh, and you might have a Titan on there, or and even other pieces of equipment, or just a Titan. Uh, but once you've put in the patient demographics that you want for that patient, and uh, you have the minimum of those four fields filled out, then you can double click on Titan Suite, and it would immediately uh, go into that function uh, under that patient's name, of course. And when you left that, you, the, after the test that you were going to do, tympanometry, OAE, and or infant screening, um, then you would uh, simply say save and exit and you'd be back to the uh, database, the auto access database and ready for the next patient. So now I'll move into the, um, the Titan Suite to show you how that operates. Once you double click on Titan Suite, it enters like this. And now you're ready to do any of the tests that you have uh, on your system. And that could be tympanometry, uh, which would include, of course, reflex if you wanted, contra and ipsy, reflex decay, even wideband tympanometry, any function that you wanted, high speed tympanometry, high frequency tympanometry, all of that. Um, or you can select OAE uh, or the infant screening. And uh, once you're here, you're in Titan Suite, and if you have a picture of a Titan right over there, that means it has, it has connected to your Titan. Uh, and it always would as long as the cradle is plugged into the computer and the uh, Titan is turned on and in the cradle. Now it's controlled by the computer. You could download tests that you've already done when using it as a handheld. There's a function on here for downloading. And, um, uh, or you can go directly, leave it in the cradle and go directly to testing. The way you would go to testing is to select either impedance, because you're going to do tympanometry, reflexes, etc., or DPOAE, uh, if you're going to do that. And you would have another one for TEOAE if you had that. And you would have another tab for uh, what they call the ABRIS, which is their infant ABR screening. ABRIS just standing for automatic uh, uh, infant screening ABR. Uh, okay, so I'm going to select the impedance tab now. So there's, there's the impedance screen, and I can select the protocol, and I can customize these protocols to be whatever I want. If sometimes all I want to do is 226 hertz uh, tympanograms, and that's it, left and right, period, then I have a protocol for that. If I'm going to do a baby, so I'd have a high frequency protocol. Uh, I'd have other protocols that include uh, tympanometry and acoustic reflex, either ipsies only, whatever frequencies I wanted, typically 500, 1000, 2000, and 4000, uh, or ipsy and contra, uh, just like that. I'll show you how that operates in a second. So you would select the protocol that you want, uh, and then you would select the ear, there's a little icon for ear, and then you, when you're ready and you got the probe in the ear, you would hit start. So I'll do a, a tympanogram just to show you how quick and easy it is to do. Again, this probe is very lightweight. I'm just clicking it, clipping it onto my shirt pocket. Probe in the left ear. I'll switch to left ear on the software and select the protocol that I want, which is simply, in this case, I just want to do a tympanogram only. Now watch how easy this is. All I do is hit the start button. Boom, it's done. So if I was doing the right ear, I would simply switch ears. And again, I can either hit the start button on the software, or I can hit the button that's on the probe if it's easier for me. So I hit that and Now, I, I mentioned noise immunity. Watch this. Uh, I'll pretend to be 
may be like a pediatric patient that makes some noise drawing tympanometry. Uh, isn't that beautiful? First of all, it was done in one second, and I just kind of cried through the whole thing, and you would never even know it, because it has high-speed digital filtering in it. Uh, and you couldn't do that on any other system. They wouldn't be that noise immune. It's also very easy to get a seal on. Uh, if uh, one of the main things is the seal algorithm, and uh, coming up with an algorithm where uh, even a patient that's not cooperating, it's easy to get a seal on. Well, I can certainly do that. I'm just hitting, uh, suppose I'm hand holding this. Uh, I think I got it in there pretty good. I'm just hand holding it. Uh, and I hit start. It's done. You know, that easy. So, um, as you can see, the tympanometry is very easy to do. After you're done with tympanometry, uh, or if you wanted to go further than simply tympanometry, then you could select a different protocol, maybe a protocol that had tympanometry plus ipsilateral reflex. You can hit start and it would automatically determine the thresholds at each frequency that was on there. It's typically 500, 1000, 2000, and 4000. But we can make it any list of frequencies that we want. If we wanted IFSI and Contra, we would uh, create a separate test for that and, uh, and it would determine the ipsilateral thresholds and then go to Contra. There also is a model that uh, besides that would have manual function on it. If you wanted to manu manually select uh, select uh, frequencies and apply the stimulus. If you wanted to manually control the pressure, uh, all, all types of functions like that. So there's nothing really left out of it at all. Okay, now I switch to the DPOE tab from the tympanometry tab. And here I will do the same as I did before. I will select a test and these tests can all be customized. Certainly you can um, create a test. Well, there's one automatically in there. I always make sure that um, everybody who I install one of these for has uh, a 12-frequency diagnostic test in any range that they want. Typically, it's from 1 to 8K, uh, but we could do high-frequency tympanometry on this as well. We c I'm sorry, high-frequency OAEs out, out to 10K, and we can even do uh, pressurized OAE. Somebody has a type C tympanogram and uh, the OAEs would be uh, severely d diminished because of that. Well, you simply do tympanometry so that we know uh, uh, and then what the middle ear pressure is and then we do OAE, but we do pressurized OAE where it actually goes to middle ear pressure before it applies the stimulus. Uh, so even if you order this DP o o OAE only, it has, um, it has tympanometry, just simple tympanometry already in it without reflex and all of that. Uh, so you get simple tympanometry as a bonus with an OAE only system. So let me show you how quick and easy this is. All right, so I've selected now a very common test, which would be a DPOE that goes from 1K to 6K. Um, this is only six frequencies, but again, you can have as many as you want. There's no limit. And I'm going to hit start. I've selected whichever ear I want. And now I'm in my left ear, so I'll select left ear. I'll hit start. So notice what it did here, all right? Uh, it quickly got uh, 6,000, 4,000, 3,000, 2,000, 1,500, and 1,000. And those check marks mean that it's normal, within normal limits. That means normal uh, intensity of the OAE as well as uh, a normal signal-to-noise ratio. But when I started, I started at high frequencies and went lower, which is a good way to do it. 
You don't have to do it, but you can do it either way, ascending or descending. But I started at the higher frequency uh, and then just proceeded. And it'll spend just a couple of seconds on each frequency and try to quickly get it, right? And you notice when I was doing 6,000, where I have a mild uh, sensory neural hearing loss myself, uh, you know, it, it didn't get a normal response, but it didn't waste time on it. It went immediately to 4,000, got it, like that, then 3, 2, uh, 1500, 1, and then it came back, right? Because I have programmed it to do so. It came back to 6,000 and tried it again uh, until I said, well, I know it's not there anyway, and I just hit, I just hit uh, stop. And uh, it, it would have timed out within a few seconds anyway uh, of trying that. But notice, notice what I have here. Uh, I have my uh, DP gram with check marks on the ones that were within normal limits for intensity and signal to noise ratio. I have all the numbers over here from 1000 to 6000 and notice that they all have check marks for detected uh, except the 6000 one, right? Because that did not fall into the criteria that we had specified. For each frequency it will give you the level of the emission, in this case with 1000 Hz is 14.9 dB SPL. The level of the noise floor, which is this shaded gray area, and this line is my normal line for uh, the level of the emission, the absolute uh, uh, level of the emission. And so uh, at, uh, at 1,000 hertz, uh, this one here, I have uh, an emission that's 14.9 dB. The noise floor, the gray shaded area, is 11.2. The difference, signal to noise ratio, between the emission and the noise is 26.1 dB. The reliability is 100%. No need to repeat. Uh, and of course, is a check for uh, so it's within normal criteria. At 6,000, but it doesn't have a check, my level of my emission is 25.2. My noise is down at 31.0, so there's enough signal-to-noise ratio there. Uh, the signal-to-noise ratio, well, it's 5.8. It's almost 6 dB. Uh, and the reliability of it is good. It's 96%. However, uh, it's still not within limits because it's, it's low, uh, and therefore you don't have a check mark on it. I can go to any of these frequencies, like I'm going to uh, 1500 now. I can click on it. And I can see the numbers, the, the, uh, all the details, what F1 was, what F2 was, uh, how long did it spend on that, which is two seconds, uh, the reliability, 100%, uh, all of that. And uh, also, it'll change the graphic here so that you actually see uh, a graph of um, F1, F2, and the actual emission here, two times F1 minus F2. And so um, you've got it very, very quickly and easily. Let me show you something about the noise immunity of it. I'm going to do it again. This time, I'm not going to be the perfect patient that I was the first time. So I hit start, and it's asking me, hey, do you want to save that since you're starting another one on the same ear? I'll say, yeah, sure. But this time, I'm not cooperating. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, mommy, she's killing me. Mommy, mommy, do something. She put a stick in my ear. Do something, mom. Notice how it went back to get those? All right, well, it got them all except that last one. And I'll tell you, I'm not autologically perfect anymore. It's not going to get that last one. So I have, uh, don't have a normal emission there. And so, even though I talked to the whole thing and cried and asked my mother to help me, I still got it, right? No other system. This is a high-performance OAE. There's no other system that I know that's that clean, that fast, and that noise immune. Well, now that I'm done with both ears, I can make a report. All I did is hit menu and uh, print preview, and here we are. P patient demographics up at the top both DP grams. Now, on this left one was the one I talked and cried through, so there's a, nor a, a higher noise level, 
but I also have uh, good emissions, except for 6,000. Uh, um, and then in my right ear, um, I did my right ear as well, and I, I didn't talk through that one, so there's a less of a noise level. But the graphs are there, all the numbers for both are here, and then there's a section here, and if I had typed in any notes about it, then uh, certainly they would appear there. Now at this point, I can hit save, uh, and it's saved. This will run under uh, NOAA if you wanted to, uh, or it's saved as a PDF, uh, which can be uh, moved over to your electronic medical records, or it could naturally be printed from any printer on the network. Um, if it's a color printer, of course, then it'll, it'll print in color. So, anyway, um, between tympanometry, OAE, and automated uh, ABR infant screening, it really is very versatile to be able to use as a PC-based piece of equipment with full flexibility or as a handheld. And in the handheld function, as I told you, you can either do all the tests you want, both ears, um, and just hit print for it to wirelessly print to uh, a, a printer instantly. Or you can put it back in the cradle, hit one button to transfer. Uh, it would let you uh, uh, then uh, view all the tests that you did and um, make these reports, uh, print them, save them, move them to electronic medical records, whatever needed to be done. So that's the Interacoustics Titan II. We call it Titan II because of it's the second generation of Titan. And uh, uh, many clinics use this. They use it in all kinds of different ways because it fits all kinds of different needs. So I hope that has helped and has given you the information you need to evaluate the Interacoustics Titan. Thank you.